Good evening, everybody. Happy Friday. I know everybody's uh, been you know, looking forward to the end of the week. Uh, I'm really glad that we're having the opportunity to do this. I think that the chance to dialogue on uh, the world that we live in, uh, what, what the conversations that we're, happy, we're having on campus uh, in this current uh, sort of movement, as I like to say, I think it's going to be good. It's going to help us and also enrich our, our, our campus as well. Um, so I'm Julian Williams. I have the, uh, the pleasure of serving as the University of South Carolina's first Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, but I would love for each of you to introduce yourselves, tell me um, where you're from, uh, if you're a student or student athlete, what, what's your major, uh, and then also your favorite food. Um, so I will throw in my favorite food. Usually it's a really good steak, but right now I'm like really craving crab legs. So I'm gonna go with that <laughs> for, uh, for now. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on the spot, Caden, and uh, if you wanna introduce yourself hometown, um, major and then also favorite, favorite food. food. Yep. Uh, all right, this is a tough one. Um, my name is Caden Briggs, um, major physical education. Um, I run track here. And my favorite food, my mom's gonna like this one. It's when she cooks spaghetti. It's top notch. Um, it's not, you know, Italian, but it's great, you know. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Um, and that's all I got on my end. Uh, Beverly. Hello, I'm Beverly Smith. I'm the head softball coach here. I grew up in Houston, Texas. So I would tell you my favorite food is all things Mexican food. Awesome. Kate. I'm Kate Bonham. I'm on the equestrian team. I'm a pu public health major, business administration minor, and my favorite food is trail mix or granola. Really? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Frank Martin. I'm a freshman. I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm uh, the basketball coach here at the university. I'm originally from Miami, Florida, uh, son of uh, Cuban immigrant parents. So when I say my favorite food, you guys are probably not going to understand what I say, but it's vaca frita con arroz y frijoles negros. So it's, uh, uh, so if I translate it, it's white rice, black beans with fried cow. So that should give you an idea what it is. Hi everyone. My name is Lauren Stewart and I play softball here at the university and I'm a senior and I'm originally from Alpharetta, Georgia. I'm currently getting my master's in mass communication. And for my favorite food, I would say both of my parents are originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, so I definitely have to go gumbo and etouffee. Mm. Those right. are my favorites. All right, <laughs> that's awesome. That's all. I think, um, you know, when I think about some of the differences that we all have, uh, one thing, you know, food sort of brings folks together. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to eat, so it's always, I always love asking that question. Mm -hmm. um, so as we, before we sort of dive in, I want to just talk about a, a few ground rules, and these aren't strict. Uh, I want us to really engage with each other ask questions uh, and just sort of enjoy the time that we have. Um, but I'd ask us to, to listen, um, to learn. So, you know, I think everybody, we all sort of fall into the trap of, you know, sometimes we're listening and waiting for the person to stop talking so we can kind of dive in, but let's really listen. Let's listen intently uh, and sort of hear from each other and take advantage of the time that we have uh, to engage. Um, let's respect each other's lived experiences, even though we, if they may be different from ours. Uh, you know, if somebody's talking personally about something that they've experienced or lived through, or even their own lived perspective, let's uh, let's respect that and listen to them. Um, not be afraid to ask some questions. So, you know, if there are questions, let's ask questions to each other and sort of engage. I'm just here to participate and sort of keep the conversation moving along. I have some questions myself, um, but I think if we can, you know, th try to engage with each other, that would be awesome. Um, and then uh, just have fun. Uh, you know, I think this is going to be an opportunity for us to learn about each other, uh, to talk a little bit about what's happening in our world, um, what's happening amongst our, our, our teams, uh, happening on our campuses, especially as it relates to race uh, and, and, and systemic injustice, um, some of the, the, the protests and, and calls for action that we're seeing uh, on our campus in this world and in the city as well. So I'd love if we can just all, uh, you know, sort of engage with each other. So I'm excited. Um, so, you know, before we get to the sort of 30,000 foot question, I want to really start right here in this room. Um, and I would love if anybody can sort of open up uh, and talk about a time when they either saw or witnessed either racism, injustice, or discrimination. And I, what that looked like, um, you know, sort of walk us through that moment if we, if we could. And I, I don't want to call on anybody, but I just want, I'll just sort of throw that question out to the group uh, and, and see who grabs onto it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be more than happy. It's uh, 1989, 90, right in there. Uh, growing up in the inner city of Miami, uh, I'd never felt it. It's Miami's such a melting pot, and it's uh, I'd never felt it. But uh, 
Uh, I was with a group of friends and we went to play softball in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. And uh, um, it's, I had never been in the South before. That's the first time I ever went somewhere in the South. And, um, and at the time, I was really strong, 310 pounds. I had a shaved head, had a goatee. And uh, I walked into a Waffle House with one of the guys I played with, and we were speaking Spanish as we walked in. And, uh, you know, anytime you enter a Waffle House, it, good morning, good morning, good morning. And we walked in and said, morning, and morning, morning. And then they started looking at us like, who are these two guys? Mm. They're not from here. So we went and just sat down at a table, and Spanish is my native language, and we're speaking Spanish. They wouldn't serve us. And uh, so I, I uh, uh, back then I was young, brave, stupid, and really bulletproof, if that's what you want to say. So I got up, I started saying all kinds of stupid stuff to everybody in that place. And we walked out and never bothered me, yeah. never, but it's the only, it's the first, and I had another situation with a police officer outside of Louisville, Kentucky, uh, years later. But, uh, uh, but that was the first time that I ever sensed uh, any kind of uh, prejudice or racism or, you know. What'd that feel like, Coach? Uh, pissed me off, but it never bothered me. Got it. And, you know, I told our players about that, and I said, those whoever was in that Waffle House that day, they're still miserable. Mm. And I don't care how they felt. They didn't do anything to impact my life in a negative way. But it's an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. It's not something that... Uh, uh, that I'd want my children to have to deal with, yeah. uh, you know, and that's, uh, but it, it's, uh, it's kind of, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's the unfortunate part that, uh, that, that exists out there. And, it, and it's not just one sided. I think it's all the way around. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, but it, it, it's kind of not fair to a certain extent because all I knew was Miami. And if you don't speak Spanish in Miami, you don't fit in, which is the other way <laughs> sure. around, you know. Sure. But uh, but it, it was it was not a it's not something that was real good. But I ended up, we ended up staying there for four days. I had a great time, you know. We went out to the bars. We 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 uh, did what 22, 23 year old you know single men do at that age, and uh, we got our tails kicked playing fast pitch softball. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it it. Uh, that, that's the first time that I ever felt it. Thanks so much for sharing, Coach. Yeah. And sort of hearing that, what, what, uh, what else? Um, what are folks thinking, anything to add, their own sort of personal perspectives? Um, I guess something similar. I remember being in seventh grade playing pop corner football and like just me and all my buddies just playing, like just doing what we like to do. And I can remember like this is the first time I've heard the N-word like, mm. like said like that aggressively like to me and I was just like, like, who's saying this? Like, what's going on? And I look around, and it's the, the opposing team is majority Caucasian. And I look, and they're all saying it at us, and I'm like, this isn't right. But, like, I can't, like, explain, like, how I'm feeling. I'm just kind of, like, confused. So we go tell our coaches, and they're like, they said what? And then they confronted, and then it just total chaos. But, like, we're 11, 12, so, like, to us, I guess I didn't know at the time, but, like, I called my mom yesterday before I, we had the discussion. I was like, did that really happen? And she was like, yeah, it happened. And I was like, I just didn't, like – understand at the time what that word meant and like I was like kind of like shell-shocked and from then on like I recognized that like there are going to be people that just don't like you just because of the way you look and like kind of like Coach Martin said it is what it is but I think growing up as a minority you just kind of accept it and just yeah. roll with it I guess. Yeah. Wow. wow. And how old were you at that at seventh grade? What is that? <sighs> I was a youngin so yeah. probably 11, 12. 12? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. You said you're from Miami right? So I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I think a lot like Miami, it's a melting pot for sure. So I grew up in an affluent neighborhood, never thought that race was even an issue. I think I just took it for granted that everyone was created and treated equally. Mm -hmm. And so everything that's happened in the past couple months has really opened my eyes. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm thankful that I came here and broadened my horizons, yeah. and I'm thankful that people are speaking out now, and I'm happy to be part of it. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, the, Kate, what you bring up is so interesting because I think about the four years that students spend uh, at the university or however long that time is. And for the most part, this will probably be one of the most diverse environments that a lot of our students are ever going to live in when you think about it. Now, some, of, some folks will move to a New York or a Miami and that sort of thing. But when you think about being in such close proximity um, with people from all over, 
uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting time. It's also one that we have to sort of take advantage of as well. But also bringing forward is that there's going to be the, uh, the overt situations like Hayden mentioned where uh, you know, the unfortunate uh, use of a racial slur directly against someone or even as, as, uh, as Coach Martin is talking about him and his friend not being served. Um, but there also are subtle uh, acts that sometimes we can do as, as people, but also um, sometimes as persons of color are the recipient of um, that may seem innocuous uh, in certain situations, but they have sort of the cumulative effect. Uh, and uh, as practitioners, we call those sort of microaggressions. And, uh, they do add up, uh, you know, they do add up over time. And I, I think about sometimes even how I try to comport myself professionally. Um, you know, I've seen folks in the majority that can sometimes get really mad at work, like really mad, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I don't have that luxury, you know, because I have to, you know, because anger for me as a black male is going to look extremely different, having to also then understand, um, you know, what sometimes going through life being viewed as a, as a threat, you know, that, that sort of you you kind of, you know, that, that will uh, shape sort of how you move forward. So curious from you all's perspective, sort of what you all are seeing or noticing or even engaging in from a social media perspective. Uh, I'll, I'll go on that one. Cause like this summer was like a tough summer just seeing all the stuff that was going on. Um, so like I, there was a point where I just had to turn off social media. Cause like, mm. I mean, every week you see something kind of like, I guess, I'm not, I'm not sure what the word is. I'm sure somebody will say it, but like, I guess a uh, traumatic, like I've seen it since the seventh grade and I've been on social media since the seventh grade. So like at some point, like you just get like numb to it. It's like it came to like a head and I was just like, I got to step away from that. I just can't, maybe wasn't the best way to deal with it, but I just had to turn, like turn social media off. Cause like for every like person saying, Hey, this is bad. There's persons that are like, Hey, like he should have done this or this. And you're just like, well, that's somebody's kid brother. So like, I think it, it finally hit this summer. And I was like, yeah, social media, I just got to, as much as I want to be informed, the videos are just too much for me to like sit there and just like take it in, so. You probably have no idea the world Jermaine Cousinard comes from and the difficulties of his upbringing because of the way you describe where you're from and you know, your neighborhood. You know, he comes from a neighborhood like I come from. It's a war zone. And by the way, my neighborhood is, everyone knows is at Little Havana, but our pocket is called Vietnam. That's how fun it was in there. and. And, but it's, it, that's the beauty of being in college, yes. is that you just said something, because you can dribble a ball, people accept you because of that talent, but they're never willing to understand what your fights and your challenges are every day. And the biggest problem we have with all this in college is it's very few of us on a college campus. Yeah. And then the few of us that are there, like we're in such a, we're not a minority, we're an extremely small minority that we're just happy to be there so we get quiet. My parents moved from Baton Rouge, Louisiana to Alpharetta, Georgia in the mid 80s. And Alpharetta is 20 minutes north of downtown Atlanta. It's a North Fulton County suburb, majority white, um, definitely middle upper class, probably majority upper class. But, and when they first moved there, it was a lot different than it is now and they, one of our neighboring counties is Forsyth County. And so there was, they were known to be the head of, the KKK always met there, and to this day they still do. And so my mom and my dad were in their probably 30s, early 30s, late 20s, early 30s, and they knew that there was going to be a protest, a march there. So everyone around the country basically knew Forsyth County, there's going to be a march there. Oprah Winfrey showed up. She taped one of her episodes there. They had Jesse Jackson and so many other civil rights people from Atlanta showed up and celebrities they arrived in their limos. It was a huge thing, but everyone knew that a change needed to happen and especially in one of America's most racist communities. So. My mom and my dad showed up there and they were marching and they were called the N-word plenty of times, had milk thrown at them, rocks, and it was a huge, absolutely huge thing. And the march, of course, made world news and to this day is definitely one of the most historic things that have happened there. But a few weeks ago, I was researching, I said, wow, I wonder how far back this racism in this community where I played basketball, softball, and ran track all through high school, I wonder how far back that goes. And because I started thinking about the experiences that I had and 
playing on my basketball team, whereas majority of us were black. We, whenever we went to go and play in Forsyth County, we knew we were in for it. We knew the referees were going to let them do whatever they wanted to us, pull our hair, push us down, it didn't matter. We weren't getting fouls called. I can specifically remember, excuse me, one of my teammates just breaking down crying in the middle of the game because everything, she couldn't get too close to a girl or a foul would be called. And it didn't matter what they did to her, it, nothing was ever called. And so I remember that, and then even when, I, when our football team played at one of their high schools in Forsyth, we didn't have many black students on the, at the school, or even on the football team, but we had more than they did. And there were nooses in the crowd, and Confederate flags were flying. And so I said, wow, so here, this is another Forsyth County school. And then even when I ran track, and I was just recounting all of these experiences that I had growing up playing in this county. And I've been at the University of South Carolina for about four months now, but one of the proudest moments that I had was watching our, our members of our football team, I think our women's soccer team were out there, and may, there may have been other uh, uh, student, student groups and student athlete groups represented, but watching those student athletes step forward and talk about particularly some, some the, the, the black and white student athletes, but mm -hmm. from the, the black players it was talking through the experience of when we take off this helmet and these pads and this uniform of garnet and black, um, we are also persons of color navigating this world and this campus and this country. And you heard from the majority players talking of some of the things that we talked about even now is, you know, we didn't know, you know, once we started to talk with our, our teammates, we knew we had some work to do on our side and on our end. And it was, it was beautiful. And I think it was, you know, that is a, 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 can be an example, I think, for the world, but also for, like you said, Coach, the type of engagement where folks are coming at it, because that takes a lot of courage.